there are many things that in today's world are taken for granted because people do not understand how these things came about and what significance they hold. The days of the week, the months, the years, the divisions of time that have been established have been established with purpose. But that purpose has been lost. And so it just has become the custom of the culture. So today, let us address first the significance of these time divisions and then go on to discuss the swastika and the movements of Tantra in the ancient world. Days of the week are designated as segments of time, as are months, quarters, seasons, years, are all segments of time. They are measurements of time. Time is a mysterious quantity. It is relative to place and person. So time has no substance on its own. It is a flow of movement. That flow of movement becomes measured and we call it time. The flow of movement in the universe has certain quantitative regulatory processes within it. It is composed of time, place, and person. They are interrelated. So time does not exist on its own. If there is no one to witness time, no conscious being to witness time, is there time? No. If there is no place, does time move? There must be place, there must be substance, there must be something to move, to have time. Being relative, time is qualified by what is moving, where, and when. On the earth, time is qualified by the changing of the seasons. When you know it is winter, then you know it is spring, then it is summer, and then fall, and then winter again. So this movement of seasons creates segments of time. And the movement of the seasons is segmented, determined by the movements of the sun and the movements of the moon. Thus, there are specific segmented time periods designated as seasons. 
quantified by sun and moon movements. So they occur on certain days. Within this movement, there are smaller cycles, moon cycles. The months originally are moon cycles. So within the cycles of seasons, there are the cycles of moons. Within the cycles of moons, there is the rise and fall of the sun each day, light and dark, light and dark, dawn and dusk, dawn and dusk. These constitute the lesser cycles. These natural cycles sustain the movement, qualify the movement of time. And then the cycles in the lives of all living beings quantify times as well. So people of ancient times understood these natural cycles. And from them, they developed an understanding of the completion of an entire cycle of seasons, calling this the year, a full cycle. They understood the seasons. They understood the cycles of the moon. They understood the cycles of night and day. And all of these cycles quantified the movement of time. And the cycles in the human body, the cycles of life on this earth, they observed all these cycles are dependent upon the cycles of the moon, the sun, the stars, the night, the day, and the complete cycle of the seasons. Life moves with the seasons. Within each of the days, it was noticed there is a pattern of energy. So the days of the month do not simply go on and on, but they are broken into a pattern, a cycle of seven. The number seven constitutes the heavenly realms. And so it was seen that the realms of creation each take a different facet in a cycle of seven. And thus, the weeks were formed. To denote the movements. Of constellations within the heavens.
The days of the week connote the different symbols. of the creative cycle. The Sunday is in honor of the great sun, the pure light, the Om from which all creation stems. Then on Monday, that sunlight gets expressed in the world. And each of the constellations each of the gods take a different day, the gods of the heaven, and are in charge of that day to demonstrate the qualities of the dominance of that energy flow into the earth. Do you know which are of each of these days? There is the sun. What are the others? Do you know? Can you tell me? Do you mean uh, the origin of the names of the days? Yes. What do they mean? Well, Monday is the moon day, right? Uh, I know Wednesday is Wotan's day, the father of the gods, Wotan. Yes. And Thor's day is for Thunor or the god of thunder, Thunor, Thor, Thor what have you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm out of answers there. Saturday? I don't recall. Oh, Saturn, sure. Saturn. Saturn. Friday. Does anyone know? No. I don't know. So these, what are these? These are the gods of the heaven, are they not? And so they each bring a certain quality to the earth. So there is the sun, the moon, how many planets? Seven. Hmm? So the constellations begin to bring energies to the earth at different times. And so out of this astrological phenomena, the days of the week emerge, the, the concept of a week, of a segment of division of seven for the cosmic cycle of the sun. So the sun has a daily cycle a weekly cycle. The moon has a monthly cycle. The seasons are the cycle of the sun. But they are seen to ancient people as the cycle of the earth. So the days are the cycle of the sun. The weeks give the cycle, the full cycle of the sun. The moon, the cycle of the months. 
and the day and the the seasons, the cycle of the earth. And so human bodies have cycles. Animals have cycles. They hibernate in the winter. They come out and they bear their children in the spring. They come out into full activity in the summer. They withdraw in the winter. So all lives in a cycle. And these movements of cycles constitute time, the concept of time. And so there are measurements of time. Attuned to the natural world and the natural cycles of what is this environment of Earth. So this is the understanding of these cycles of time that has come down through the ages, been modified here and there, and exists today. There have been different calendars, slightly different interpretations in different cultures, have there not been? Yes. But yet there is a general consensus around these basic conceptual understandings, though they may be measured in slightly different ways by people evolving in different regions, independent of each other. But today the world is connected and so knowledge is unifying. But the ancient base of that knowledge remains. Is it clear? No, uh, what, uh, why seven? I mean, there are many more gods, many more planets. Why seven days? Is there something hard structured in the cosmos for seven days? How many realms are there? How many locus? Seven. Do you have any more questions? Is, is there a day of the week associated with a particular loka? They are symbolized from the cosmos being symbolically represented the day of sun is the rising, the honor of the sun god, the honor of the, of the pure spiritual essence that is the source of all life, right? Um, what what is the reason for the specific days for, for the, fasting during the month? Ah, why fast? This is an entirely different subject, but I will answer quickly. Because, again, moving with these cycles of energy, the moon reaches its fullest and 11 days after that is the fasting which will be four days before the new moon and then again 11 days after the new moon four days before the full moon is fasting again this is to counterbalance the 
uh, pull of the moon upon the fluids in the body. So it is a health practice. <coughs> Related to this in that it relates to, again, the cycles. All things relate to the cycles. But in the modern world of electricity and only human contact, where people lose track of day and night, they become out of touch with the cycles of their body, with the cycles of nature. And the meanings of these cycles become less significant to them. But the cycles truly rule their life, whether they are aware or not. The seven days of the week are representative of the seven cycles of the cosmos. The number seven is sacred. And the seventh day is for rest from worldly expression. And for connection to the sublime. This cycle of human activity is based in the cycles of days. It expresses a need for a pause in activity. There must be a cycle of action and rest. It is in honor of the cosmic spheres. And the influences in the different days of the week 
of different different cosmological flows. All right. <coughs> Regarding the swastika, it appeared in many ancient cultures, did it not? It is known to be as far away as Tibet and South America. Having its origins in many different places. It is a natural hieroglyph for the entire process of creation. The ancient world, the written languages were primarily hieroglyphs, pictorial languages symbolic languages. And this pictograph was very highly significant. It arose simultaneously in different cultures. In the intuitive realms. given by the cosmic forces. And then was carried around the world. Tantra as the ancient science of transmutation and the practical approach for transmuting <clears throat> ordinary consciousness <clears throat> to sublime awareness. <clears throat> Developed a system of practices within different cultural contexts. A like but varied according to time, place, and person. Given by the grace of Parama Purusha to those ancient men and women of wisdom who looked within for the knowledge. They brought that knowledge to their cultures in different forms, forming the ancient beginnings of shamanism. Tantra cannot really be separated from shamanism. For those ancient tantrics 
were the first shamans. Those to go to the gods. and the sublime. To realize the unity of all life. And to bring back practices that would help people to make their own intuitive connection to the Supreme as well as to live in the world and survive. So Tantra has its origins in shamanism Shamanism has its origins in Tantra. And those ancient peoples developed, as time went on, systems of practices for the initiated. And they began to understand the nature of Shakti, Kundalini. They developed understanding of the chakras. And you will see, this happened not only in India, but in other places, but with a different cultural bent to the knowledge as it comes through people of different cultures. They express it differently. But the true knowledge was kept very secret and was not written in books, was passed only to the initiated. So those ancient mystics who became revered by their tribes and clans, had their own society. And there was much more travel, and travel in subtle planes. For these mystics did not have TV and internet to distract them. They traveled in the subtle realms they knew the knowledge of the subtle realms. And that knowledge was shared by the Supreme with awe. Then as time went on, whole systems were developed. Are you there? Whole systems were developed. Yeah. And as those systems grew, the people and the cultures grew. And travel among people increased from land to land. <clears throat> there was also the influence of the founders, those people from far away who came to this earth and created substantial cultures upon this planet. When they left, their influence remained, their teachings. Their knowledge 
spread across the globe. In the very ancient days, there was very great technology, the technology of the founders. But as time went on, with the, those who were the source of that knowledge left, slowly the knowledge began to degrade. Those who understood were very few. But the mysticism and deeper wisdom that connected those mystics with the Supreme and the knowledge that comes from that source, they remained. The knowledge of the world has changed and changed again. From the founders to the shamans, to the melting of cultures and the spanning of the globe, to the warriors and the wars. The fights for territory and dominance And through the history of humankind, the knowledge of Parama Purusha, the knowledge of the Supreme, has always been accessible to those who go within to seek it. That knowledge is here and now. It was never in the past or in the future. That knowledge was and is always available. For it dwells within the cosmic mind within the fields, within fields of cosmic existence. And from that cosmic existence, the knowledge and practices of Tantra were given to help the people of ancient times. They were left in the collective memory from the founders. They were accessible through deep introspection. In times when the world was quiet, the cycles close to the people and the ability to sit under the stars and dissolve into the universe remained simple and ordinary without modern day distractions. It seems there is some problem. So those are the ways in which Tantra 
shamanism, knowledge of the divine Shakti and the Supreme Purusha have come about in the complexity of this world. And the ancient symbolisms of the hieroglyphic languages or writings have shown the swastika as the pictograph of the cosmos and creation. This was the ancient legacy of the founders and the people of this world. <coughs> and their understanding of the cycles of this planet the cycles of the earth, the sun, the moon, the constellations, the planets, and their influence upon human life. And finally, the cycles of human life. All right?